Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to introduce you to the new JSON field in Django. So this was released about a week ago at the time of recording this video in Django 3.1, and it's a field that allows you to use JSON in any database that you use in your Django project. So I'm just going to JSON field here. Before they only had JSON fields available for Postgres databases, I believe, but now they've modified Django to make it work with any database. So what they do is if the database doesn't support JSON natively, then they'll just store a string and then Django will interpret that string as JSON and then you can uh, use all the features of JSON fields. So in this video, I'll give you a simple example of how to use it and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about you know what it does and when you should use it in my opinion. So uh, I'll go over to my text editor. I already have a Django project set up. I have an app in that project called Demo and I'll go to the models file here and I'll just create a model. So uh, I'll call this example and it's going to in here for models.model of course. And I'll have one field because I'm only concerned with JSON data. So to uh, use this, I need a JSON field. And of course it comes from uh, models that's imported from Django.db. And it can take in an encoder and a decoder, but I would just leave those as the default. Really the only thing that you may be interested in using is the default. And with this, you just have to keep in mind that you can't pass in something like an empty dictionary or an empty list because those are mutable. So what will happen is every time you create uh, new data with this in the same you know, session, uh, they'll all have the same object because these are passed by reference. So you know, you'll have the default on one, you'll make some changes to it, and then that's gonna affect any other defaults that you have active at that moment. So what you wanna do is you just wanna pass something immutable. You can pass a string like this, a string is immutable. You can also create an anonymous function to return like an empty dictionary that will work because that function will get called every time the default is created. So just keep that in mind if you wanna use the default. Don't just pass in an empty dictionary uh, if you wanna have an empty JSON object as your default. So I have my JSON field here. And what I'll do is I will make the migrations. I think I have to migrate the uh, default stuff and then I'll make the migrations. So make migrations. Okay, so I have the migration created. I have the database created. I'll open up my database just so we can see what's going on here. And I'll do schema. And then it should be, I believe, demo underscore example is the name of the database and it is not. So let me look at the tables and it is not here. So let me try making that migration again. Oh, I didn't migrate the second time. So Python uh, manage up high, then migrate. And then I can have the demo created. Okay, so now I'll open up the database again and then schema demo underscore example. All right, so if we look here, we have the schema for this table that I just created with the single JSON field. And since SQLite supports JSON data in some form, uh, we see stuff with JSON here. So we have this check constraint on our data column, which is just a text column, but there's a check constraint um, that verifies that this text is valid JSON. So I believe other databases work this way as well. They don't really create a JSON field directly. There's no such thing as a JSON column. Instead, what they do is they use a regular text column and then they have a constraint that just verifies that the text in that column is valid JSON. So that's what's going on here. And because this is a regular field in uh, models here, you can use this with any database. So even if the database doesn't support JSON, Django will take care of it, like I've said before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up the shell and I'll just run through an example using this so we can see how it works. So uh, manage.py shell, and then I'll go ahead and import the example. So from um, demo.models, I'm going to import example. And with this example, I can you know create some data. So I'll just call this first, and for data, we're gonna pass in some JSON data. So uh, what I'll pass in is key and value. So this is valid JSON. I'll do first save, right? And if I query for this, so I'll just do example, or that's not, it should be objects. And then um, let's get the first one. Uh, we see that. So then if I do data, 
we see key value, right? So it's a, a Python dictionary that gets returned. So just to verify that, uh, what I'll do is I'll put type around this. And instead of a string, it should be a dictionary, right? So we see it is a dictionary object. And the reason why this is important is because we can interface with it directly if it is in a dictionary object. If it were a string, then we would have to convert it to the dictionary ourselves using um, the JSON module in Python. But since Django is taking care of everything for us, uh, it automatically gets converted to a dictionary. And then when it gets saved in the database, uh, let me go back to the SQLite database. So select star from a demo underscore example. Uh, we see that key and value are stored in the database. And note that when I created it, I use single quotes, but in the database it has double quotes. And that's because only double quotes are valid in JSON, whereas in a dictionary in Python, single quotes or double quotes are fine. So there's no issue there. Uh, it's just converting it to an actual valid JSON object. So let me open up the shell again, and I'll create like a more complicated example. So what I'll do is I'll import that again. So from demo.models import example. And first let me create the object. So I'll just call this JSON object and I'll have some information. So like name, I'll put Anthony for the name, uh, occupation, I'll put programmer here. And then I'll put, um, let's say addresses and addresses will be for it will be a list of things. So let's see, one, two, three, fake street. And the second address would be four, five, six, um, roadie road. Okay, so let me just make sure the brackets are correct. I think it is. Okay, so I have this JSON object, which is actually just a Python dictionary that has you know, three keys in it and the address's key is a list. So what I wanna do is I want to add this to my database. So I'll call this second and I'm going to instantiate data with that JSON object. And then I'll save this to the database. And let me create one more. So uh, we'll call this JSON object two. And then I'll have basically the same data. So name, uh, John, uh, occupation, uh, let's see, a doctor. And then the addresses for uh, John will be, I don't know, 931 Street Road. And then I'll have uh, 392 Lane Street. Okay. And then I'll create the third one. So third equals example, data equals JSON object two. And then I can go ahead and save that. Okay, so I should have three things in the database. So if I do example, objects, all, I get a query set with three results, which is exactly what I want. And if I set this to be a variable called results, and then I get the third one and look at the data, we see the data that I added for John. Then we see the data for Anthony. And of course we see the data for the first one that I did, which is just key value. So now let's write a query for this. So queries are straightforward once you know the pattern. So example, objects, filter, right? So what do I wanna filter by? Let's say I want to find all of the keys or all the values where the key is uh, occupation and the value is, let's say, doctor. So to do that, I'm going to start with data. So this is typical in the Django filters. So you start with the name of the field. So data is the name of the field. But if I want to search inside of one of the keys, what I just do is have double underscore. So underscore, underscore, and then the name of the key. So the name of the key is occupation. And then the value that I'm interested in is doctor, right? So if I do that, I get example object three, which we know is uh, John because I added John last, right? And if I do this uh, dot data, actually I need to call it first. No, I don't need to call it first. I need to uh, go to the index because it's a query set. Okay, so we see John here is a doctor. If I go back and I 
change this to, let's say, name, and I search for Anthony, then we get Anthony as a result. And as you can imagine, if I had embedded keys, so if I had like the key as, you know, some other key name, let's say um, my data, and the value is uh, another object, then to access that inner object, I just add a couple more underscores. So it would be like data, let's say my data, and then name, if we had like a, another object inside of data, right? If we want to access something from a list, we can do that as well, but it becomes a little more uh, tricky because, you know, normally you wouldn't query this way, but it is possible. So as an example, I'll say data addresses and then zero, and we'll say equals uh, one, two, three, fake street, right? And we get uh, the information for Anthony. If I change the zero to one, I get nothing, right? It returns this error because I'm trying to access the data uh, for something that doesn't exist. I don't have any results. But we see when we switch it to one, meaning the first index, I can't get the result because one, two, three, fake street is only on the zeroth index. So this isn't typically how you would query something, but if you want to query like this for some reason, you can. Uh, another thing you can do is you can do uh, like has key. So let me remove this and I'll show you has key. So I'll go back to data and I'll do data and then has key. And the key that I'm interested in is occupation. So occupation, uh, run that. And maybe I didn't put the correct number. Okay, yeah, so two underscores. I forgot the second underscore. And we see uh, for has key occupation, we have the second object and the third object. We're not getting the first object because remember the first object only has key and value. So if I have has key, then I have the first example object which has key value. So there are other ones that you can use that are similar that work in all databases. There uh, is uh, has keys. So instead of has key, you have has keys where you just pass in a list of keys that you're looking for. And, and if all of them are in the JSON object, it returns for you. And there's also any key, which you would pass in a list of keys and then uh, it will return all of the JSON objects that have at least one of the key in the list that you pass. So as far as using this, in my opinion, when you add data like this to your uh, database, since it's unstructured, meaning you know there's no schema that enforces like the type of JSON object that you need to pass in, I think you need to enforce that yourself. So I do think there is a use for having JSON data inside of a SQL database, but you need to be consistent with the data that you pass in in some way. You don't want to pass in data that is completely different. So in this example, you notice how for the first one, I have key value, and that's completely different than the ones that have the name, the occupation, and the addresses. Now, it's okay if you don't have all the same keys in the objects, but just think like it should be a subset of some, you know, biggest possible JSON object that you can have, in my opinion, just so the data kind of makes sense. So I've used this before in a project where I needed to save some user preferences on the front end. So you can imagine you have some kind of app running and there's a bunch of configuration that the user can change for you know, their personal preference. And instead of saving all that into individual columns in a database, what I decided to do was save it all as a JSON object. And then when it's time to load those preferences into the app, it was a front end app, you just pass the JSON data to the front end app and then the front end app can read that JSON data and load the config that the user has picked. If I put it into a regular SQL schema where it was like columns, then I will have to convert that data into some kind of JSON object and then send that. Whereas if I save it as a JSON object, I don't have to convert anything. So that is the use case that I found. Um, but I think there are other use cases, just in my opinion, you wanna make sure that the data is consistent in some way. Don't just add random uh, JSON objects to each row to where like if you query for something, then you're only gonna get one possible row because each row is completely different. So I hope that that helped you understand a little bit about JSON field in Django. Uh, of course, there's a lot more you can do and you have to practice and try to figure out situations where you wanna use it. But this is the, a good introduction, I think.
And if you're interested in learning more about how to work with the database in Django for me, you can check out my Django Database Essentials course. Uh, if you go to prettyprinted.com slash Django Data, you can sign up for the course. It's completely free. Uh, I cover a bunch of different things on how to work with the database in Django and the ORM in Django. And I also put a link in the description below, along with the code for this video, which really isn't much. Actually, no, I won't put the code because it's a single uh, model. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.